Putin. Ten years ago was 2012. That's when Barack Obama was running for re-election against Mitt Romney, who during the debate warned that Barack Obama was taking his eye off the ball when it came to Vladimir Putin. Obama cockily responded something along the lines of saying, hey, Mitt, the 20th century called and it wants its foreign policy back. I actually think he did that line. I think he did that stock hacky stand up line like the 20th century called and it wants its foreign policy back. I'm pretty sure he said that literally word for word because the Democrats in 2012 thought Romney was foolish for warning us about Russia and Putin. America, we were convinced, had other things to worry about. We were convinced that Russia is old news. This was back in 2012. We were told that Russia is no longer the Soviet Union and they've changed. We were told they're us. We've, we've built them in our own image now. They're, they're capitalists. Maybe it's not the democracy we would prefer, but it's a friend of Wall Street and any friend of Wall Street is a friend of America's. Then, Four years later, in 2016, the same president, Barack Obama, and his intelligence agencies began to worry that Vladimir Putin was interfering with American elections. It was 2016. Hillary was running against Donald Trump. And back then, it was just assumed that Hillary Clinton was going to win. That's why the head of the FBI, James Comey, gave those press conferences during the presidential campaign, updating us on his investigation into Hillary's email server. Everyone assumed Hillary was going to win, and he just wanted to make sure the American people knew that when she became president, he as FBI director was going to be impartial, that he was going to hold her feet to the fire never held Donald Trump's feet to the fire because he claims that he never thought Donald Trump was going to win, but Hillary lost. Trump won. Because, because we now know that the last people to know what's happening in America are the people who are running it. The last people to know what's happening in America are the people running it. It turns out Hillary was hated just as much as Donald Trump. We knew that Hillary was hated, but we didn't know how much Obama was also hated. And looking back, we now realize that the American people saw Barack Obama, the Democrats, as dyed-in-the-wool corporatists. And we now know that Obama triggered a groundswell of populism that came from Bernie supporters and Trump supporters. The people in charge of the Democratic Party had no idea how much they were despised from the left and the right. Now, Trump did lose the popular vote. He won the Electoral College and all the experts were stunned. It should not have been close. How is this possible? On election day, on November 9th, was it November 9th? No, uh, 9-11, was it November 9th, 2016? Anyway, in November of 2016, Trump won, and the experts were stunned. How is it possible that Donald Trump did this? It was, it was Pearl Harbor. It was 9-11. It was stunning. And, and Washington's gatekeepers, the, the ones who are supposed to prevent something like this from happening, the ones who are to keep our elections safe from somebody who wants to uh, change things, they let their guard down. The same way we let our guard down on 9-11, the people in charge of our elections let their guard down. And Trump hijacked our government and flew it right into the ground. It it was a terrorist attack. And there were people who serve as our uh, political 
Systems Joint Chiefs of Staff. They're both Republicans. They're both Democrats. They represent not so much the status quo as the richest 1%. It was their job to make sure that nobody messes with our election to make sure that they get to pick who the president is. When it comes to America's democracy, we have a, a battery of bipartisan anti-ballistic missiles aimed at any stray candidate who intends to wreak havoc on the ruling class. And that's why in 2020, once NORAD spotted Bernie heading for the White House, they knocked him out of the sky. They knew he was dangerous. So Obama gathered the troops and got Biden nominated. And uh, because they could not allow 2016 to happen again, Trump. That's when the Americans, 2016 is when the, the Americans in charge of our defense systems fell asleep at the, the switch and we were attacked by Donald Trump. We learned in 2016 that our elections were not safe. We learned that, my God, anyone could get elected president, and we can't have that. And the Democrats needed someone to blame. We know this. And there were many reasons Hillary lost, mostly because she's Hillary. But there were other reasons as well. It, it, was Russian interference. It had to be Russian interference. And so the Democrats and the media decided to tell the American people that Putin had interfered in our elections, which, as we all know, is horrible because only the richest 1% who control both parties, only they get to interfere with our elections. So by the time Donald Trump was sitting in the Oval Office, Barack Obama, who four years earlier said Putin was no threat to America. Four years later, Barack Obama was now telling everyone, along with the stenographers and the media, that Putin had hacked our democracy. Hey, Barack, the 20th century called. They said they want back their foreign policy. It's amazing what people will say. Uh, to further their agenda. Well, what is the truth about Putin? I don't believe, I don't know. I don't believe Trump won because of Putin. But I do believe Putin helped. He helped in ways I don't think any of us can understand. I think he helped with advertising on Facebook and Google. I think he helped providing Trump with Compromat on Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell that got them to fall in line. We are talking ex-KGB agent here. I think an ex-KGB agent is a, a, a marvel at oppo research and can drop uh, hand Donald Trump a manila envelope that he could then drop on Lindsey Graham's desk and say, you want me to talk about this? And Lindsey Graham becomes a lapdog. Did Putin, did Putin put, did he install Donald Trump in the White House? No. The same way I believe secondhand smoke contributes to lung cancer, it's not the same as actually smoking a cigarette. I believe that Putin interfered in our 2016 election. I believe he hacked our democracy, not as much as the Republican Party hacks our democracy. But since the GOP does hack our, dem our democracy, I have no doubt that they took whatever help from Pu Putin he was willing to offer. You have seen the Mueller report. You have seen the emails back and forth where people from Putin's administration are offering compromise to Don Trump Jr. and they're holding meetings in Trump Tower. So Trump 
upset the leaders of both the Democratic Party and the old guard of the Republican Party. The Never Trumpers, the Bill Crystals, the, the David Frums, the, uh, the Lincoln Project criminals, and of course the Bushes. Uh, they were all pissed that someone other than themselves had hacked American elections. Now, I've been doing this show for 13 years. I know, I don't know all my listeners, but I know a lot of them. I don't have that many. <laughs> I know them by name. I know a lot of my listeners are probably disagreeing with me. I know many of you believe that Putin had nothing to do with Trump winning the election. Absolutely nothing. I disagree. I know many of my listeners say, you know what, even if Putin did hack the 2016 election, who cares? America deserves it. I disagree. Now, I'm an American. Pardon my patriotism, but I love this shithole we call a country. This shithole is my home. We do horrible things all over the world. We are doing horrible things all over the world, including this podcast. But not all of you do horrible things. And many of you are fighting to stop this country from doing horrible things. And some of you, as long as you're white, don't end up going to prison for speaking out. I'm not going for patriotism here. I'm just saying, as an American, I prefer the Democrats and the Republicans hacking our elections to Vladimir Putin hacking our elections. Call me old fashioned, but if our elections are going to be hacked, and they always are, I rather have them hacked by people who must live here in America and face the consequences. There is no question, there is no question that Barack Obama and Clyburn hacked the election and installed Biden so that Bernie wouldn't be nominated. There's no question that they hacked that election. And I loathe Barack Obama for that. But I prefer Barack Obama influencing our elections to Vladimir Putin doing it. I think a lot of my listeners, a lot of people on the left, uh, don't get that. I think they dismiss Russiagate as, what do they call it, a nothing burger? Uh, and they turn on the mainstream media, as well they should, as well they should, for inflating. Russiagate was like Inflategate actually. Uh, Rachel Maddow, MSNBC, we know, I know they don't report the news and they spent way too much time on Putin and not nearly enough on income inequality or more importantly, Medicare for all, right? But that doesn't mean they were wrong about Putin meddling in our elections. They fixated on it to the exclusion of everything else, but that doesn't make them wrong about trying to find out, to finally do some kind of investigative reporting, even though they were basically just uh, being fed information by the CIA. But uh, that doesn't mean they were wrong about Putin meddling in our elections. He meddled. Not sure how successfully, but he meddled. Yes, America meddles in Russian elections, but Putin meddled in our elections. And here's the most important thing. If you hate Trump and everyone around him, as I do, I've hated him for 40 years. If you think he is a fascist who tried to destroy what's left of our republic, I happen to believe that, then you prosecute him. Then you prosecute him. You go after him with everything you have the minute he becomes president. You destroy him legally and peacefully by any means necessary. The minute he's sworn in as president, 
you tie him up with lawsuits and investigations, you find any reason to prosecute Donald Trump. You look into the inaugural committee, you look into his Manhattan real estate, you look into his taxes, you look into the emoluments clause, you find every and any reason to lock this man up. You drag his presidency into the mud. You cost him time and money, and you destroy all his enablers. You make them rack up legal bills. You make them beg him for pardons. You make them compromise themselves by going on TV and like uh, Giuliani and and uh, developing uh, drinking problems and and just showing themselves to be the fools they are you cost these people time and money because as bad as everybody is in our country trump is the worst of the worst and you need to get him behind bars and when you want to get somebody behind bars you rely on something called prosecutorial discretion when you are trying to put somebody behind bars, you you look for whatever crimes they've committed and then pick the one that you think will be the most effective in front of a jury. It's up to the prosecutor to decide what crime he's going to pursue. Unfortunately, we had Robert Mueller. That's a whole other story. Four years ago, I wanted Donald Trump out of office and arrested for crimes going back to the 70s because Donald Trump is a mobster and they're slippery and it's very hard to lock up a mobster. You usually have to wait till another mobster performs the act of justice in front of Sparks Steakhouse. It's very hard to lock up mobsters because they will stop at nothing to stay out of jail. So any way you can lock up a mobster, you do it. Al Capone, Al Capone was finally sent to jail for taxes. Of all the crimes Al Capone committed, it was a joke. You're sending him to jail for taxes? you by any means necessary by any means necessary and i said that if you can lock up trump for colluding with the russians by any means necessary whatever gets him behind bars do it what we're trying to do is lock up donald trump legally now when al capone was sent away nobody said taxes really nobody pays their taxes that's not fair this is bogus what about roosevelt he doesn't pay his tax. what about harry truman he owed some money you're gonna lock up al capone just because yeah you're gonna lock up al capone for any reason that you can to get him locked up unless you like al capone unless you believe that mobsters should not be locked up but if you're going to lock up a mobster, you find anything you can that a jury will convict on and you lock them up. Uh, it, I remember as a kid reading about Al Capone going to prison for taxes, and I thought it was kind of funny. And then you realize, well, he's kind of like Trump. You know, he, Trump owned New York City. Capone owned Chicago, which means he owns the judges and the prosecutors and the police, the feds have to step in by any means necessary, taxes, taxes, you get him on taxes. Trump is mobbed up. His entire real estate empire was built on laundering money for the American mafia, the Russian mafia, ex-KGB agents, and Russian oligarchs. I don't care how you stop him, just stop him. Get him for Russian collusion. 
get him for inciting a riot in front of the Capitol. Just get him. And then get Biden. I don't care. What do I care if you lock up Biden or if you lock up Nancy Pelosi? Lock them up. Keep locking up these people till we finally get honest people running our government. But I'll tell you that Biden and, and Pelosi are not crypto fascists. They're, they're, they're crime families. The Bidens are criminal and, and Pelosi is a criminal, but they are not mortal threats to our republic the way Donald Trump and this Republican Party has become. So lock them up while you have the muscle, as Frankie Five Angels would say. Russiagate wasn't about Putin. It was about trapping Trump or at the very least slowing him down, which I think uh, the people who were on his tail, I think they succeeded in slowing him down by just, just persecuting him. If you can't prosecute Trump, persecute him. And I know the media got stories wrong about Russiagate. That's what happens when, when, you, uh, when you're reporters and you're digging. That's what happens when you're stenographers for old uh, officials in the National Security Council and people, uh, Democrats who work for the CIA. When you're jotting down notes from them, you're going to get things wrong. But that's what happens in journalism. And the New York Times apologizes when it gets things wrong, by the way. So as for, for Russiagate, just because something is a bright, shiny object that the Democrats use to distract us from the real problems in our country, that doesn't mean that bright, shiny object that's distracting us isn't actually true. Maybe, maybe Russia gate, maybe Putin isn't the most important problem facing America, uh, but it's still a problem. Putin is a bad guy. Vladimir Putin is a bad guy. Uh, now, just because our healthcare system kills thousands of Americans each week through medical malpractice that goes unchallenged or from uh, people being denied treatment because they can't afford it, just because our country is run by oligarchs who couldn't care less if we live or die, that doesn't mean Putin is a nice guy. If uh, you shoot me in the face and then stab me in the arm, the shot in the face is what's going to kill me. But that knife wound to the arm is, is still going to hurt. Uh, and then if I stub my toe, while well, I've been shot in the face, stabbed in the arm, and I stub my toe running, you know, to let the, the medics in, that stubbing my toe, that, that's going to hurt. It's not going to be as bad as getting shot in the face. And that's who Putin is. Putin is, is the stubbed toe. I don't like stubbing my toe. It hurts, uh, but it's still bad. It's not as bad as getting shot in the face or this analogy. I think this analogy is worse than getting shot in the face. Look, I think we can all agree that as bad as America is, it's still our shitty home. And just because we meddle in other countries' business, which we shouldn't, it's not okay for Putin to meddle in ours. Those on the right, the defenders of Trump, and those on the left who hated Hillary, I've noticed that they immediately deploy the what about argument. And I find it tiresome. I, I do. And it, it doesn't end. Yes, you were shot in the face. Uh, but you also stubbed your toe. What about getting stubbed in the toe? Why are you complaining about getting shot in the face when you've also stubbed your toe? That is how political discussions, that's where they've devolved to these days. Uh, this is like fourth grade stuff. Tucker Carlson, 
who never met an authoritarian who doesn't make him cream his pants, was saying this week that Putin in Ukraine is not so bad. He said, why do you hate Putin? What did Putin ever do to you? And people are going, you know what? He's right. And he goes on to say, Putin never tried to teach my child critical race theory. This is the whataboutism. This is, yes, he's invaded Putin. He's invaded Ukraine, but he's not forcing critical race. What about critical race theory? Shouldn't we be worried about that instead? He never, he never tried to call me a racist, said Tucker Carlson. Putin never tried to get me fired because he disagreed with my politics. Tucker Carlson said Putin never made the fentanyl our kids overdose on, or he never tried to snuff out Christianity. Not so sure about that. And he says, why? This is what Tucker Carlson says. Why are we supposed to hate Putin? And some on the left deploy the same argument. Why worry about Putin when we do the same exact things he's doing, or there are other things to worry about, those on the left, those on the right, deploy this what about stuff uh, when they say uh, we should not be interfering in Ukraine. And that they may be right. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Russia has invaded Ukraine. Is, is that? A bad thing. Can we discuss today uh, what the truth is about Russia invading Ukraine without moral certainty, without judgment? Just what what are the facts? Uh, seems like a lot of my friends have a lot of very strong opinions about Putin, Ukraine, and Biden. Seems like I have a lot of strong opinions about. Ukraine, Putin and Biden. But these opinions sometimes eclipse the facts on the ground. Uh, I'd like today's show, I'd like the discussion not to be whether or not we should be sending troops to Eastern Europe. I don't think we need to catastrophize. I don't think we need to go right to, should we nuke Moscow? We don't have to go there. Uh, I think we should probably discuss exactly what is happening in Ukraine right now. We don't know what the absolute truth is because the first casualty of war is the truth. Actually, that's not true. It's probably a soldier. The second casualty of war is the truth. I'm hearing a lot of uh, conflicting arguments, not facts. Uh, a lot of Putin apologists uh, on this show, and I've made this case, I've said that back in 2014, that Putin took Crimea and that it was no big deal. This is something I said back in 2014. Uh, I said it's no big deal because Crimea never really belonged to Ukraine, that it was a gift to the Ukrainians back in the 50s. Uh, when Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union. Uh, I've said on the show that Crimea is mostly Russian speaking and they welcomed Russia as liberators. That's something I said about eight, well, what, 2014, about six years ago. Is it true? Maybe, maybe. I said it thinking that Putin wasn't going to invade Ukraine. I was, I wasn't certain that he wasn't going to invade Ukraine, but I said, I didn't think he was going to invade Ukraine. Last week on the show, we said that Putin only wanted Donetsk and Luhansk, collectively known as the Donbass region, where most of the residents speak Russian and would prefer being part of Russia and not Ukraine. We said that as recently as Monday on this show. Then on Monday, Putin recognized these two breakaway republics. And on this show, we said that while it was 
probably unfortunate, unfortunate, it was probably no cause for alarm. Howie Klein, who uh, is pretty wise, when he was on the show mon Monday, he asked a difficult question. He said, does this feel like Germany taking the Sudetenland from Czechoslovakia? When the rest of Europe said it was no big deal because the Sudetenland was filled with German speaking people who felt they were being rescued by Hitler. There was pushback when Howie said that. I think a lot of us wanted to believe Putin would stop with the Donbass region on Monday. I think a lot of people also just didn't care. I think a lot of people on the left said, you know what, who cares? It's none of my business. And that Russia has every right to invade countries along its border, especially since Ukraine wants to join NATO, which would make it aligned with an army of nations, 140,000 soldiers who are primed to attack Russia. That's true. That's true. Ukraine does want to join NATO. Russia doesn't want that. Russia has every right not to want Ukraine to join NATO. Should it invade Ukraine over NATO? It's true that America would never allow a neighboring country to be aligned with an army that opposes American interests. It's also true that America invades other countries. We even invaded Afghanistan, which neighbors Russia. It's right on the southern border of Russia. Yes, it is true that Putin invaded Ukraine, but up until a few months ago, we had a 20 year invasion of Afghanistan right up against Russia. And we would never allow Russia to invade Canada or Mexico. It's out of the question. It's all true. But that doesn't make Putin's invasion of Ukraine OK, because all war is bad. Ours and Russia's. Our invasion of Afghanistan was criminal. So is Putin's invasion of Ukraine. Our invasion of Panama was criminal. So was Russia's invasion of Afghanistan. So I think what's needed now, perhaps, is a little humility. Uh, I find it somewhat humbling to go to the internet and read what's happening in Ukraine. I did not think uh, Putin would invade Ukraine the way he's invading it today. Biden did. And all I do on this show is trash Biden, who spent Thanksgiving in the home of David Rubenstein, head of the Carlisle Group, the largest war profiteer in the world. He knew there was going to be an invasion. But we all thought otherwise. Uh, we all said Russia has no intention of invading Ukraine. We were told that Russia always amasses troops along the Ukrainian border, that it's a seasonal thing. Every year this happens as sort of a military training exercise, we were told. And this is just the Biden administration overreacting because it wants a war or it wants people scared to think there's a war. So David Rubenstein from the Carlisle Group can make more money selling weapons to Eastern Europe members of NATO. For, for several weeks in the lead up to today's invasion, I think on this show, we pretty much said, don't worry that Putin is not going to invade Ukraine because the last thing Putin needs is another Russian quagmire like the one Afghanistan 
turned out to be. That's what I said. That's what I thought. I thought, why would he invade Ukraine? Uh, but he did. So perhaps a little humility on my part. Perhaps a little humility. Uh, perhaps all of us could benefit from some humility. Uh, no, this isn't the Sudetenland. This isn't Chamberlain, peace in our time, or appeasement. Uh, but it smells a little like it. Just a little. It smells like it. If you, if you told us, as I did, that Russia would never invade, if you believe Russia was just testing NATO, but they would never in, invade, uh, I think I owe it to myself uh, to wonder what else I've gotten wrong. I did not think Putin would invade Ukraine. I also didn't think it was all that important. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not important. I felt it was a distraction. Maybe it is. Uh, humili humility dictates uh, that I don't know. I don't know if this is a distraction. I don't know if this is important. I do know that 140 million Americans are living at or below the poverty line. In a few weeks, 1 million Americans will have died from COVID. In America, suicide and drug addiction are at record numbers, and it's next to impossible, unless you're rich, to get help for your mental illness without going out of pocket. Those issues, to me, are far more worrisome than the people of Ukraine falling under the thumb of Vladimir Putin. However, that doesn't make Vladimir Putin invading Ukraine okay, the same way it doesn't make America invading Afghanistan okay. Uh, I don't know. I am sure we'll do the forensics on Ukraine and we'll learn further how America destroyed Ukraine, how we propped up neo-Nazis in Ukraine and that we gave to Ukraine our own form of corruption. That's not okay, what we did in Ukraine, but that still doesn't mean Putin invading Ukraine is okay, unless you believe he is liberating Ukraine. Maybe you believe that. I don't know. Maybe you're rooting for Putin. Maybe you think the Ukrainian people would be better off if it were part of the Russian Federation. Maybe you think Al Capone, it was unfair for Al Capone to go to prison because of taxes. I don't know. Maybe none of us need an opinion. Maybe we need information, facts. Facts that mean nothing other than the truth, no matter how much or how little they jibe with our world view. We have to be careful not to interpret the news to make a case for our own world view. I think a lot of Americans don't get the news. They get the news filtered through the prism of left or right or some kind of agenda. I would just like to know what is happening on the ground in Ukraine. Maybe we owe it to ourselves and each other to first ascertain what the facts are, as opposed to bringing up all the crimes against humanity this country has and continues to commit. I've had discussions on the phone with some friends who will not discuss what's going on in Ukraine without bringing up every horrible crime America has committed. I know America has committed crimes. I know that. Russia invaded Ukraine. That's criminal. Uh, I know we invaded Afghanistan and Iraq and Vietnam. Cuba, I know that. On and on. Mexico. 
but Russia invaded Ukraine. What do you think is going on? Some people will not even talk to me about what is happening in Ukraine without bringing up all the horrible crimes America has committed. That's not the conversation I want to have because the news coming out of Ukraine seems awfully disturbing. I don't know how much we should care. An argument could be made that this stuff happens all the time, especially in Africa, and nobody seems to care. But when white people get invaded, it's upsetting because Ukrainians look like us, so we care more. So maybe, maybe we should ignore Ukraine. Maybe. I don't know. Since Russia seized Crimea back in 2014, roughly 14,000 people have died in that region as fighting continued between Ukraine and Russian separatists. That's a lot of people. 14,000 people have died over roughly eight years, 14,000 dead. And that comes out to about 1,750 people dying a year. That's a lot of people, 1,750 people dying as Russian separatists fight Ukraine's army. 1,750 people a year. But that's nothing compared to the United States, where each year 115,000 Americans are shot by other Americans. 15,000 Americans each year are murdered with guns. 25,000 use a gun to commit suicide. And more than 1,000 Americans each year are shot to death by our police. I don't know. Maybe we should worry about gun violence in America before we worry about it in Ukraine. I don't know. Maybe we should worry about the separatists in America and not the separatists in Ukraine. We have a convoy of truckers heading for Washington, for Biden's State of the Union. Maybe we should be worrying about those separatists. Uh, I get isolationism. I understand it. Sometimes isolationism is, is a dirty word. Uh, Joseph Kennedy, that was Kennedy's father, President Kennedy's father. Charles Lindbergh paid a, a, a heavy political price for their isolationism. And their isolationism wasn't just about wanting to stay out of war. It was about liking Hitler. That's where their isolationism came from. Kennedy and Lindbergh admired Hitler. Uh, there were people in, uh, in, in England who liked Hitler. It wasn't so much they were trying to avoid war. It was, you know, this Hitler guy is not so bad. So when I hear isolationism uh, with Putin, I can't help but wonder, maybe they like, maybe you like Putin. Maybe I, sh maybe I should like Putin. Now, again, it's a different time. Uh, but we're not, you know, we're not entitled, not always entitled to the luxury of isolationism. I, I suspect this is one of those moments. I I, I've been wrong completely with Putin, completely wrong. Uh, I believe Putin... Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I was wrong about the the breakaway. I was wrong about Crimea and the two uh, breakaway republics. Let me be wrong again. I think he'll stop with Ukraine. I don't think he's coming for America, but he might be coming for Europe. <laughs>